Hi, it is Friday and I haven't really been recording all week. So let's do some updates. All right, I'll try to start in chronological order. So I did write a very negative review of the motorcycle service that I received. And I did get one of the head of the service department people trying to contact me on Yelp. They called me initially on the phone, but I didn't pick up and then I blocked their number because I just don't want to deal with them anymore. But the guy through Yelp did say that they would be willing to um, refund me money so that I would only end up paying the original 225. I could mail you a check. So I was like, okay mail me a check here's my address and then i never heard from him again originally i was thinking like man i know 80 dollars is a lot but i just don't want to deal with them anymore so i was willing to just freaking forget about it so they would have to deal with that but since then i have not heard back but I just want to kind of put that in the past because that was just a very frustrating experience and I have my bike back so I really shouldn't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, next up, I uh, was contemplating whether I wanted to talk about this on camera or not but it's something that I thought a lot about I guess because that's the type of person I am, I'm very analytical so I originally was concerned about talking about it on camera because um, I don't know just in case the person watches the video they're gonna know I'm talking about them but I'm not going to say names or anything so I just kind of wanted to say a few things maybe people can kind of like understand what it's like from the opposite point of view and uh, people probably don't know what the heck I'm talking about when I describe it like that but it's basically about that guy that added me off Steam who um, pretty much met me from Dota and then asked me to have dinner with him that first week. So when it comes to stuff like that, <clears throat> I don't like to assume that it's with romantic intentions. But the problem with that is sometimes that makes me seem naive because, you know, why else would a guy who hardly knows you ask you out to a meal if it's not for that purpose but there are a few people out there I like to think that are not automatically just going to be like romantically interested because they need to get to know you better but anyways so in regards to this person um, I do feel like I was pretty upfront in the beginning through text about my belief that I don't want to just meet up with you to try to get to know you with a goal of dating. I was telling him that I wanted to get to know him to see if I would be interested. However, just based on like my initial gut feeling from talking to him for like a week or two, I just had no interest uh, in that regard, but I would be totally fine with being friends and hanging out. But the problem is I think he, uh, I think he was just inexperienced. He seemed like he made a lot of assumptions about my actions and kind of twisted it to think that it showed I was interested. So for example, like I'm a very responsive person, right? I also have a very open personality. So I talk about anything. I talk about literally anything. So I make like sexual jokes. I'm, I've been playing games for forever, so I know that online gamer culture, so I tend to use like a lot of vulgar language at times, and sometimes guys like that because maybe they're used to girls who are very careful with what they say, and I am the complete opposite of that. So maybe at times like I was thinking that if I would reference like a sexual joke, maybe he would think that that's flirting or um, he also seemed to think that since I'm a very responsive person that that showed I was interested. So um, the fact that I'm responding to him or talking to him late at night, like 12 to 1 a.m., he misconstrued that as showing interest when for me, 
It's just that I'm awake at 1 a.m., you send me a message, I reply to it, that's it. And then I guess the last one was just, um, he thought that he was making me laugh a lot in person, and I was actually thinking that when I was hanging out with him, that like, uh, I just got that feeling that me laughing a lot was maybe giving off the vibe that I was interested in him when I wasn't. I, I just, I don't know, you say something funny and I laugh. Does that have to mean I like you romantically? No, but it's just, um, it was just a really uh, challenging situation because maybe I wasn't being as upfront as I could have been from the very beginning, but it was only across two weeks and I never sent anything that I feel like could be misconstrued for interest. So I do think he probably just looked too deeply into simple actions and was trying to see meaning in them. But I did tell him a couple days ago that I'm just not interested romantically. And I think a big issue that he seemed to do was he was very forward about being interested. So he would say certain things that would seem a little awkward or would kind of come across uncomfortable to me. And it would be a little bit cringy but I, I think maybe it's a fault of mine where when people send me stuff like that, I kind of deflect it. So I don't respond directly to it. I just kind of like ignore it and say something else back. But, um, and I guess one of the other tells that showed he was interested is he bought me a gift after only meeting me once. And I'm already a little iffy with gifts because it's somebody else spending their hard earned money to give you an item. But I, I just, I mean, he never ended up giving it to me, but he said he had it and he bought me a gift and I was like, uh oh, where is this going? So um, yeah, I mean, I had to let him know and uh, not really sure if we will be keeping in contact, but that was definitely something that I haven't experienced in a while. So maybe that like livened up my life a little bit oh and yesterday uh, so something i might not have realized initially when i first got my motorcycle again was like how easy it is to actually navigate through traffic i mean of course it's logical it's a smaller vehicle and it makes it much easier to like zigzag and weave your way through but I think for a while when I first started riding again, I was trying to ride, I was kind of riding like I was a car where I wasn't being as aggressive at maneuvering through traffic. And I am actually a pretty aggressive driver. So for the past week or two, I've actually been very aggressive with my riding in terms of just like constantly passing people. And I would be like passing people maybe without getting too far in front of them first. So. I was probably driving like, I was probably riding like way too aggressive and that's dangerous. Um, something I uh, try to remind myself often is that riding is really freaking dangerous and even though it's a lot of fun, like I really need to be aware of my surroundings. So anyways, yesterday when I was riding home from work, I was doing my usual aggressive riding on the freeway and then this car came into my lane um, while I was going 80 and I had to really slam on my brakes. Like I was really close to hitting this car and I kind of try to replay this moment in my mind a little bit because I'm trying to think about whether I did something wrong because I, from what I recall, I maybe just got into the, I maybe just got into the lane I was in. Like I just lane changed and I was, accelerating to get back to 80 and I was just going forward. So I think it was obviously their fault that they did not see me. See, the thing is, I think people tend to be a little bit stupid. Like they don't think logically when they drive. I think they just take information as is in the moment and don't consider anything else. So for example, um, if there's like three lanes and you have two cars at the furthest outside lane, Anytime I'm in either of those scenarios and I want to merge into the middle lane, I always look past 
the lane I'm going into to make sure that there isn't another car there with the same idea of wanting to go into the middle lane because you have to consider these other factors. You can't just check the lane you're trying to go into, right? You have to check other people's potential desires to go into the same lane and then kind of modify accordingly, like maybe let them go first or I go first. Like you wanna just make sure they're aware of the fact that two people are trying to get into the same lane. So in my case, I honestly just think that that person checked directly next to them, saw nobody and then went without taking into account the fact that I was in the lane and accelerating pretty fast and would hit them if they lane changed. So anyways, that was, um, I am pretty sure that's the closest I've ever been to having an accident. So yesterday that definitely shook me up because I was just so pissed off about people not being aware. Um, I don't necessarily know if it would have been the worst accident because I think by the time that I got very close to their car, I was already like braking pretty hard. So uh, I think, you know, at most if I hit their car, I would probably maybe drop my bike. Scary part about it is that I wasn't aware of what was happening behind me. So if there was someone right behind me and I was braking like that, they could have hit me also. So it's just scary to think about um, nearly having an accident on a motorcycle. And then considering the fact that if I had an accident, the person who got into it with me in a car would just be like untouched and I would be severely damaged. So I took a break from riding today because I rode this entire week to work and I'm home right now watching um, the next Dota 2 major. It is Epicenter in Moscow, so I took a half day for that and I'm home now. Yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what's been going on with me just because I literally didn't record all week. I guess like my upcoming plans, I really do just plan on watching this for the next week or so. This um, event ends May 7th, so it's going on for a while. It's going to be all weekend and I'm going to have to adjust my sleeping schedule a little bit for it. Um, I do want to go see Shane and Aegon because uh, Shane has a few things regarding the prong collar that he's uncertain about and he wants me to kind of help him with it. I kind of want to help him with helping Aegon do place and getting him to be calm when he's about to eat because that's something he seems to be struggling with right now. He says that Aegon is like flipping out when he's about to eat his food, like overly excited and going wild and it's hard for him to stay in his sit before he gets the food. So I really wanna see what his behavior is like and to see if I can help him get Aegon to understand that you're not going to be eating food unless you sit and then I release you. He seems like he's kind of busy this weekend with family stuff, so we're not sure if I'll be able to go over, but that's something I definitely want to try to do. And then, um, Something I also noticed when I was checking the map from my motorcycle ride last week was that there's actually a California Wolf Center similar to where my ride was last time and that seems really cool. Like I actually want to do this and they actually have private tours for $80 per person and I was thinking of doing that. It's just that they only do weekdays so I would have to schedule this like two weeks in advance. I think I would want to find out how long this tour is because if it's $80, I would like to hope that it would be pretty extensive and it seems like it would be, um, but that's just you know quite expensive for something like this. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting my money's worth. I haven't actually scheduled anything yet because I, I'm not sure yet if that's something that I want to spend this month because I'm really just trying to control my spending. <laughs> but the other problem is that after yesterday's um, near accident on my motorcycle, I've been thinking more and more that I really want a GoPro, but they are like two, three hundred dollars. Um, the most recent one, the Hero 6, is 300, I believe. And it seems like it has mixed reviews. And another thing too is that my current camera, the Sony that I've been recording on for several months now, 
It is 4K and 30 FPS. The Hero 6 has capabilities of 4K and 60 FPS, which might be useless if I'm recording with my camera and then I try to use that GoPro camera footage with this. So if I'm rendering, my frames per seconds will be off, so I feel like I might as well just get like a 4K 30 FPS to match up with my camera. So I think the Hero 5 is 4K 30 FPS. So maybe I could find one that's used off eBay or something and just try to get one at a discount because I really do think that aside from the fact that I would be very thrilled to record footage of me riding and putting it in some of my vlogs, I do think it's very important for, you know, safety. Like what if you get in an accident? If you have everything on footage, then that's so much better instead of depending on witnesses or like anything else. I've talked long enough and now it is game three of the VP game I'm watching right now. So I am going to do that and I hope everyone has had a great week so far. Hi guys. So it's Saturday, four o'clock and kind of, um, I don't really like recording when it's about complaining about something, but I guess I also want to talk about it because it could be useful for other people knowing this information ahead of time. But um, basically what happened was I went for a joy ride earlier and I started noticing like a jiggling noise. Like it felt like something was jiggling within my wheel. And it was frustrating too because it wasn't a kiss, it wasn't a consistent noise. I would just be like riding, like maybe at higher speeds it was really hard to hear because everything is so noisy, but if I was like slow in like maybe second or third gear, I could hear it. So I pulled over to the side of the road and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Um, somebody else did stop and talk to me a little bit, like asking what's wrong, but um, he actually told me that it would probably be wise to take it to a shop. and. Um, so I guess like I originally was going to go to a shop, but I decided to first come home, um, look up motorcycle repair stores nearby. And I called one that is very close, two minutes ride, um, and asked them what could be the issue. And they were like, you know, you really should not be riding on this. And I was like, I have to bring it in. Um, so I'll ride it to you guys. I mean, I was very lucky that it's literally super close so even though it was um unnerving to ride on it i got it there and i heard the noise a lot right when i was getting there but um just like the level of service from this place compared to the other one is such a big difference but basically what the issue was they said that i was missing the collar or the spacer in between the bearings of my rear wheel so basically the way it works is you have two bearings that like go into the um, that go into the wheel and kind of keep it stable, right? And in between those two bearings, you have a spacer that kind of like holds them in place and keeps them, you know, I don't know, from moving too much. And I was completely missing that spacer in between. And basically what was happening is like the bearings were kind of like, uh, I, I don't think I explained it very well, but basically they were not on properly, it was loose, and also um, one of the screws on the outside of my wheel was loose because it had nothing to really attach to, like that spacer in between is very important. So he said that if I kept riding on this, my rear wheel could have gotten completely fucked because one of the bearings would just like get ruined and then there's a possibility that my chain could get caught and there's like a bunch of bad stuff that could happen. So. What they did also say was that they were wrong. They told me that when you're reassembling a wheel after disassembling it, you need new bearings. They say that when you take the bearings out, you knock them out of shape. They said something like that to me. So they forced me to buy new bearings for the job that they did when really it was not needed at all. So overall, what I'm trying to say is if any motorcycle shop ever tells you that you need new bearings when all you're doing is disassembling the wheel and that's it and then putting it back together they are full of shit don't trust them go someplace else and 
yeah, just like what a nightmare. I'm so pissed that I need to go yet another week for my bike to get fixed for this issue. Um, I'm honestly though very happy that I found this shop because like right when I got there, I just felt like they were so helpful. Like I brought it and right away he looked at it and told me what the issue was and helped me to understand why it was a problem. Like I like learning about stuff like that. So like when he was telling me what the issue was, I was like, please show me, like explain to me why that's a problem and like what should be correct and stuff like that. So um, probably another week for my bike to be repaired. <laughs> I guess I had a week of fun, but then that scares me also because I took that joyride last week for two hours on this terrible rear wheel and uh, one of my bearings also needs to be replaced. So I need a spacer and I need a new bearing. So that is my riding update. Um, today has been a real bummer just because of this. I tend to be that type of person where if something negative happens, then it tends to weigh on me quite a bit. And this specific instance is even worse because I went through two weeks of frustration with that motorcycle store. And now knowing that they continue to fuck me with this issue is just um, makes it harder for me not to be angry about it. So I guess like now I feel confident that my problem is being worked on and that soon uh, everything will be resolved. So <laughs> I can now resume my day by uh, getting in a better mood or something. Um, but yeah, I pretty much dropped it off there, stayed there for a little bit and then walked home. I am so lucky that I was able to walk home. I wouldn't have wanted to Uber back Preferably not, but now I am pretty hungry, so definitely need to eat. There's more Epicenter starting at midnight, or actually it might be starting at 3 a.m. today, but I'm not sure if I want to catch the first game. So if I don't catch the first game, then what a liar. The game started at midnight again. So the game started at midnight, I'm probably going to wake up at 3 a.m. The first game I'm not very interested in. So yeah, time to cheer up. <laughs>